Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, board certified family practice, and today we're going to talk about vertigo. So vertigo is a sensation of being off balance or disequilibrium or a sense of movement. Very uncomfortable when you've had it if you've ever had vertigo. So your inner ears are what's responsible for your sense of position or balance, different than your middle ear and your outer ear, which are responsible for hearing. Your ears have three little loops, if you want to think of these little loops as hula hoops, and they almost look like three loops on a roller coaster. If you have your hula hoop and you spin it quickly, you can hear the little beads swishing around inside the hula hoop. This is how your ear senses movement. These hula hoops spin as your head moves in a certain position, and the fluid inside of the hula hoop swishes in one direction or the other, and this gives your brain information on when your head is moving. So even if your eyes are closed and you're being spun around, you know that you're moving because these hula hoops spin, and the fluid uh, translates that into electrical impulses, which your brain senses and determines it to be movement. When you have vertigo, one of your ears is actually goofed up and when you move or turn a certain way, your ear starts shouting to your brain, we're moving, we're moving, even though you're not moving and your brain actually tricks you into thinking that you're moving or spinning and your other ear says, well, that doesn't make sense. Your eyeballs say, I'm not moving. Your brain asks your neck muscles, are you moving? And everybody else says, no, we're not moving. And then your brain actually suppresses the ear that's being goofed up. So the, the vertigo or movement sensation is usually temporary and your brain will override it. The problem is is that even a few minutes later next time you move your head that goofed up ear starts shouting again we're moving we're moving and your brain is tricked and it says okay we're moving and then you kind of catch on and you ignore that ear and over time that tends to get better. For some people, vertigo can be very mild. Other people's, it can be severe to the point where you can't even open your eyes or turn or get out of bed without falling down and feeling nauseous and throwing up. It can be very short-lived. It can be very long-term as well. It can be one-time only. It can be chronic. There's a condition called Meniere's disease, and that's a triad of vertigo, hearing loss in just one ear, and a ringing in your ears, and that unfortunately can be a hereditary condition. So when I see people who have vertigo in the office, one of the things I ask them if there's a family history of Meniere's disease, or if they remember an uncle being profoundly deaf or complaining of ringing in their ears, that may have been Meniere's disease. There's not a whole lot of effective treatment for vertigo. There's medications we can use like meclizine or antivert. And what that does is it actually just suppresses the sensation of movement. It doesn't actually get you better any quicker. And in fact, there's some evidence that says that it may prolong the vertigo attack. So we think that your brain learns to ignore the bad ear. And the more we have vertigo, the quicker your brain will learn that. So uh, by suppressing that signal, taking meclizine, we may actually just drag out the vertigo episode longer. So when I have a patient with vertigo, unless it's very severe, I, don't t I tell them to not take the meclizine medication. We also have to be careful when we're driving or climbing up on a chair or a ladder because if you've had vertigo, you know that it can happen very suddenly. So just turning my head to change lanes, I may have a vertigo attack and be unable to drive um, until that vertigo goes away. There's some tricks we can use to help you get over vertigo, and that's actually inducing vertigo. So you lay on an edge of a bed, and you roll a quarter turn of a time. Now, it depends on which ear is affected. You may have to roll left to right or right to left, clockwise or counterclockwise. And you lay in that position, and you stimulate the vertigo, and you literally wait there for your brain to figure out that it's vertigo and that it's wrong, and then your brain suppresses that ear. And then as soon as the vertigo goes away, you roll another quarter of a turn, and what you'll find is each quarter of a turn you roll, you tend to have a little bit less vertigo, and by the time you get to the other side of the bed, your brain is completely ignoring that ear. The problem is, is that hours later, the brain may forget, and you may get vertigo again, so this is something you'll need to do on a regular basis. Um, if you have vertigo, we want to make sure that there's not a tumor. So there's a tumor you can get uh, called an acoustic neuroma at the base of the brain that can be associated with vertigo. And there's a very simple office test called the Hall Pike Maneuver your doctor can do in the office to determine if your vertigo uh, seems more benign or if it needs to have an MRI done.
with this hall pike maneuver, we want to have two things happen. So we want your vertigo to be both fatigable and extinguishable. And what that means is we tip you down and tip your head to the side and have you induce vertigo and leave you in that position uh, and wait for the vertigo to go away. And if you have benign vertigo, typically within a few seconds, the vertigo starts to fade away um, and it fatigues. We sit you up and we lay you back down again. And the second time you do it, it's a little bit less severe. And the third time we do it, you actually don't have vertigo because your brain learned to ignore the ear and that's called extinguishable. So we want to make sure that your vertigo is fatigable and extinguishable. And if it's not, you probably need an MRI of the ear to make sure you don't have an acoustic neuroma. Now, acoustic neuromas are very rare. Uh, they're what's called a great white whale. They're often hunted but seldom caught. So I wouldn't be too nervous if you have vertigo, but you should see your doctor to help, help them make that decision. So again, vertigo can be mild, it can be severe, it can be short-term, it can be long-term, it can be a one-time gig, it can be chronic and recurrent, it can be associated with ringing of the ears and sensory neuro or one-sided hearing loss, and that can be a condition called Meniere's disease, which unfortunately is very progressive. Um, if you do have vertigo and you're not having great luck with your doctor or neurologist or audiologist even, you're welcome to come see me in the office. I actually have a couple of very unique and successful treatments for chronic vertigo, and I'd be happy to talk to you about that if you would like. Uh, Dr. Greg Castello, be well. Thanks.